Good afternoon, everyone. Just a quick chat about China. So I disagreed with Pelosi going, and I said that many times, but China is being just the fucking whiniest of bitches about this whole event. We get it. You're compensating. But if Beijing hadn't turned Pelosi's Taiwan visit into some major drama with this fiery rhetoric, threats, and war games, she would have come and gone. And it wouldn't have even like been a blip on the global news radar for more than maybe 24 hours, if that, if at all. But now they're losing their collective minds. And one thing that it's signaling is that if you have business or global supply chains operating in China, it's time for you to get out of China. They're getting very emotional and very uh, out of control with their responses to things that they don't have control, which is essentially nothing other than maybe their own country. And even that is suspect. They have no power globally because their economics were built on a house of cards. Their military has no reach outside of the region. And what they're doing right now, these war games, are going to accelerate China's isolation and eventual economic collapse. Now, the economic collapse was already coming. I talked about that in other videos with regard to their global debt crisis, their failed Belt and Road Initiative, where they're not going to get any money back out of it, or at least not even remotely close to the money that they got from the investment into it but also their demographic crisis where in the next 50 years their population is going to be cut in half by their own terrible one-child policies and people just not having kids. And then finally, um, their housing crisis is what's going to be the major nail in the coffin. They, they have a housing bubble that is multiple times larger than the U.S. and it's going to crush their economy probably in the next five years, if not sooner. Um, there has never been a country that has fucked itself over so many times because of its own pride than China, I think, in probably history. I mean, and I mean, like, made it so that the rest of the world is just like, Jesus Christ, we don't even want to deal with you anymore. Even countries like Japan and Germany came back to the world order. China continues to find ways to isolate itself away from the world, and it's going to happen again. And they're being very prideful and... I get it, Pelosi went, but the response is far too over the top and it's going to end up hurting Xi Jinping. Not inter internally, China sees this as like, we're big bad and doing that and the rest of the world just like rolling their eyes at China. And they're doing things like firing missiles over Taiwan, which is 10 times more escalatory than Pelosi's visit. Let's be fucking clear here. Pelosi landing her plane and saying hi to some diplomats might give you like some heartburn China, but firing actual missiles over Taiwan, that is a wartime escalation. So let's cut the shit on your response here as being even remotely within the realm of sane. I mean, you fired missiles into Japanese territory. You got to be careful there because Jap Japan has a navy that rivals yours and could probably smoke you in the South China Sea without the U.S. help. So... Speaking of what, you know, you know what China hasn't done? Fired missiles anywhere near anything American. Because they don't want that fucking problem. Instead, when it comes to the U.S., China's canceling their China-U.S. theater commanders talk. They're canceling the U.S. defense policy coordination talks. They're canceling the U.S. maritime consultative agreement or con consultative agreement meetings. They're suspending China-U.S. cooperation on repatriation of illegal immigrants. They're suspending China-U.S. cooperation on legal assistance in criminal matters. They're suspending China-U.S. Uh, cooperation against transnational crimes. They're suspending their co counter-narcotics cooperation with the U.S. And they're suspending uh, climate talks with the U.S., which doesn't fucking help anybody. In fact, it hurts everyone, including China. They're being babies. But you know what? Notice what China isn't suspending? Trade with the U.S., they're not suspending trade on retail goods. They're not suspending trade on energy. They're not suspending anything that deals with the ability for China to get or fund itself because they need the U.S. as a business partner. 
To Taiwan's credit, the president of Taiwan responded to Chinese live fire military exercises, has said, We are calm and we will not act in haste. We are rational and will not act to provoke, but we, are abs we will absolutely not back down. Good for them. Meanwhile, the U.S. is doing what the U.S. does, largely ignoring this temper tantrum while collecting data on everything China does so we can use it in our virtual future planning. As former General Ryan said, this will permit us to observe how China and the PLA might think about conducting a naval blockade on Taiwan. So... It's kind of fascinating because it's a similar situation with Russia when they were firing their stuff over to over into Ukraine and all this war that Russia is having. The U.S. is just taking notes. And that's what they're doing now with China. In essence, they're telegraphing their operational approach so that we, can, we in the U.S. and our allies can war game ways to subvert it in the future. The live fire areas that they published in the Eastern Theater Command plots out where the Chinese think they're operating areas for strategic intimidation of Taiwan and for the conduct conduct for the conduct of a, a blockade in the future now some people might say well they could be just it's just a faint they might be faking it well sure but you know you're training on an operation that you're never going to do and you didn't train on the one you will do so either way it's either we're obs we're observing the ob uh, operation they will do or we're not and they're not even training on anything that's worth it so they're just wasting money fine with that too um the groupings of the naval task forces of China and the readiness will be observed in this live fire. It provides good insights on their ability of China to respond in the short term, what their command styles are, what their naval tactics are going to be. Um, it'll allow us to observe the ability for them to sustain large scale and long term deployments. Uh, just because you have a lot of ships and you have a lot of boats doesn't mean you can just coordinate them all simultaneously or sustain them logistically across the sea. Uh, we'll be able to see how they integrate in combined arms, their air-sea uh, capability, and to include space space if they're doing any kind of communication via cyber, which is something that China has struggled mightily with. Everyone talks about these missiles that they've set up for anti-ship. The problem is, is they require a cyber capability that is easily counterable by the U.S. Um, their systems rely on being directly connected to see the ships as they're being as they're fired, and if they disconnect, they default to firing to the previous location. The problem with that, ships move on the ocean. So when you fire something and it takes 15 minutes to get there, the ship has moved. So. They're, we're going to be able to observe those things. Um, we'll be able to observe their electronic warfare efforts. Their, uh, their usually predictable ways of doing things, all of which we can just continue to keep an eye on their air and naval cap, how they all interact, their capabilities. And it'll turn into weaknesses we can exploit. Um, it'll ability, We can see how their communications will work. We might even be able to intercept their communications and understand it. This is going to be a goldmine for Western observers. Uh, the Taiwanese, the Americans, Japanese, Australians, all of them are going to watch this very closely because we've known for the longest time that Chinese command and control efforts are are really way behind the U.S. and similar to the Russians. They just have no ability to distribute command downward because they're afraid to give the individual guy on ground the ability to make decisions. And if we observe this again, we can continue to say, okay, well, China's going to struggle in any fight with the U.S., let alone a U.S.-trained Taiwan or a U.S. manned and equipped or U.S. equipped and trained to Japan and, and this is just going to turn into something that China, their pride is driving this, but they're going to inevitably lose out in business. They're going to lose out in their capability to uh, remain discreet on how their military operates, and all because they're pissy about Pelosi visiting. I hope it was worth it, China.